Hello and welcome. I immediately hit record again. Um, hopefully I don't regret that. I had an opportunity to go like, ah, go do something. Literally hit record again. <laughs> so what really caught my attention over here? I was looking around. First and foremost, it's worth noting there is a super volcano, extinct super volcano here somewhere like it generally like this area near these things up to this thing like in this area where a bunch of gold and other things are found there because it's an extinct super volcano but like it's also at least here if we look at it, there's this thing on the side here. It kind of looks like a ring, like a like a figure eight structure off of it. Did I lose track of it? It's kind of tricky to find. Okay, I don't want to get too caught up on that. That's just a detail that I came across today. What really I wanted to talk about was this stuff. All the subtleties here. This is ice, I believe. Nope. That's how it actually does that. But anyway, somewhere here it is. I found it. I was uh, stalling as I was looking. Unfortunately, that area gets like iced over. Right there. What in the... We see something similarly shaped right here. A little in the center, but then going this way, up this way, over this way, around, round, around, and if we come down here, it's hard to tell what's happening exactly, but it suddenly has some over here. So it seemingly wraps around. Um, my thoughts are this is like a little current that sat here and really etched in this path specifically in a way that's detectable like it's not it's i can see it in places where i'm like all right i see the current thing going on enough to like see something happening but this is much more defined much more defined like over here, it looks like something interesting is going on and things like this, but without something like that to point to. Like here, like something maybe, although now as I zoom in, it does look much more circular. So like, my thoughts are, if this is a glacier process, why are they just going in circles? Like that doesn't make sense. What makes more sense is just a really, really intense and deep water on top of the surface that's etching it in like current paths and maybe has ice atop it, but it's not even necessarily what's doing the etching because that's incredible. This is incredible. Unfortunately, a lot of Canada looks like that, so I tried to find another map, which is why, where this came from, in. And I'm trying to find that place again. There it is. I 
can't remove clouds, but we can see this line here goes down this way and then basically goes this way. And then like here. All, like we just need to look at earth no surface temperature El Nino hmm okay 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 pardon me This is much more like as I envision Canada was forming those lines. Like if I just pull this out here. Like that with that. Just looking for like a good triangle. Maybe that one right there is pretty reflective of this one. Opposite, like upside down, but with the sharp point, maybe more up there. Like this can probably be traced why what's happening. It might have just folded in here like over and over. I was thinking, or it might have came around like wrapped around in this triangular way that then like got more and more forced towards the middle. But it did so in a way where it like kind of pressurized in sequence and then like around I don't know. But it's probably much more like this is, where it's continuous, but it really, really intense. So as to shape the surface there. Okay, let's go back here. See if we can find some more. Just over here, maybe. It's much more at large scale in some places. Maybe. Hmm. Nine minutes in, now I'm already like, I think that's all I had to say. I can't find any more good examples here. So many of these like rope structures.
No clouds, man. No clouds, man. That's definitely clouds. I think it was called something river black bleak even something river Blake river Two point seven. much on this. I'm sure there's more if I could find wherever it is, but it didn't just immediately pop up. Mega Caldera, there we go. River group. Okay, let's check it out. Pardon me, I'm just scrolling through. Like, oh, fuck. Unwatchable. Unwatchable. Oh, wait, no one's watching anyway. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> A little sad, I drained my. Uh, Vape pen, because it's not vaping. So I'm gonna... Anyway. Southern Abbey TB Greenstone Belt is defined as an subaqueous mega caldera. Compelling evidence include... A radial and con concentric organization of syn volcanic ma mafic to intermediate dikes. Okay, I don't want to read all this. Just some details. <clears throat> Calderas are dominated. Initial model. Initial model for the Blake River group in the Archeon Abbot TB Greenstone Belt was of a mafic basalt dominated base upon which a felsic complex developed. This study presents a fundamental reinterpretation of the Blake River group based on the pattern of mafic to intermediate dikes and sills, the syn volcanic fracture systems, and the distribution of volcanic clastic deposits. The Blake River Mega Caldera Complex Brimk with a diameter of 80 to 90 kilometers is equivalent to, to equivalent to the dimension of the Olympus Mons summit caldera on Mars. Despite some deformation, the Brimk has preserved a geometry and features typical of both overlapping and nested calderas. This new interpretation has significant Im implications 
for understanding Archeon tectonic evolution, defining new exploration targets for volcanogenic massive sulfides in the BRG. So this is interesting in terms of the concept that Earth supernova before Earth expanded. Earth's expansion was a second supernova of the planet. The first one was starting at 2.7 million years or billion years radiometric dating. And that one was really like a full-blown planetary supernova where it was a planetary supervolcano event. But I believe that really the Canadian Shield had a integral part in it. It's maybe the epicenter still, even though it was planetary-wide. It still had like an epicenter. It just influenced the whole planet as a result of it in a way. That was more like volcanic than anything else. But like, I was thinking, well, if this thing, if we're noticing a caldera over here, that's like, boop. <laughs> really, it's not that big. Eight and eighty kilometers is only that much, pretty much. It's not that big compared to this. So, like, maybe this is related to some other caldera that was present that the water then, like, preferentially inf interacted with. Whereas this one was more like a baby one, even though it was considered a super volcano compared to what might have been going on at the time. Maybe it wasn't that super volcano-y. Like, it also seems to have a connection over, maybe, to it. Like, more so than the connection to the Great Lakes. It has a, like, from this center to here. Like through that point, let's see. I don't know how centered that was. Let's move that a bit. And through the point itself, and then check out down here. Like it was, it was basically here. So it's possible there's a relationship between this center and there. I was curious how many miles, kilometers it might be. From the time, like, there's also a chunk over here, a chunk in Wyoming, and a chunk over here of some material that I think got, like, separated by this. I talked about that at some point, recently, somewhat. With regard to... Uh, why a video on Wyoming recently? I don't remember which one. Probably one of the Canada <coughs> based episodes. Whatever. Um. Characterized by 2,700 um, million year volcanic sequence belonging to the southern, well, for 10, 10 million years radiometric dating period. So very rapid. 10 million, year, 10 million years, like, and then done, like, blah, 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 hanging out, hanging out, boom, 10 million years, and then done. Although that's kind of crazy that it's called a super volcano that went on for 10 million years. Belonging to the southern volcanic zone. For southern volcanic zone. That means there's more zone maybe even going up this way. Let's see.
Um, hard to say. Maybe it's in the paper itself. Figure one. Figure one. In the Abbey TB subprovince. Subdivided into Mesema and Noranda subgroups. The subgroup is dominated by tholeitic and calc alkaline mafic volcanic rocks with local mafic and felsic centers. A mafic variolitic volcanic unit along the margin of the BRT is a mar marker unit at the base of the group. The tholeitic to calc alkaline overlying Naranda subgroup is distinctly bimodal with felsic volcanic rocks accounting for up to 40% of the subgroup by volume. The Mesema subgroup is interpreted to be derived from the partial melting of a mantle source, fractionating garnet and amphiboli. Amphiboli? The source of the Naranda subgroup is recognized to be a garnet-free, high-level magma with different degrees of assimilation and fractional crystallization, implying enceolic to enzymatic components. Naranda caldera was recognized by them and studied in detail, referred to as the Naranda cauldron. Oval-shaped measures 15 kilometers by 20 kilometers and lies between Sin volcanic faults. I don't want to read this whole thing. Okay. Let's see. Distribution of the Mavic Dyke Swarms in the Blake River Group dashed lines highlight the main features discussed in the text. Okay. Okay, okay. Trajectories of bedding attitudes. General architecture depicts an inner dome. Da 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 da. Okay. Um. Oh. I guess this is the interpretation. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Summit calderas at several points. And then it eroded. At some point. Conclusions. As if a road isn't anywhere. One time. Or just collapse? Are they saying it collapsed, maybe? Figure 11. B 
began with the progressive buildup of a multi-vent mafic shield volcanic complex as the result of the deep source magmatism garnet instability field represented by the mycema subgroup. The superstructure formed above the submarine Tholeitic basalt plain of the garrison subgroup, equivalent to Kino Jevis of Jensen and Lower Blake River. Progressive growth of the edifice modified the internal stress field, and relaxation is partially accommodated via down warping and rift development. Horseshoe structure represents an important component of the rift system inversion of Yanging and directs from side to side along the horseshoe dike, supports its interpretation as a collapsed sector in the edifice. Magmatic activity and subsidence of the incipient megavolcano caused a thermal rise that triggered the partial melting of the crust and was subsequently responsible, responsible for the genesis and growth of an underlying plutonic mass at an approximate depth of 3 to 5 kilometers. Stage two. Stage, oh, there's so many stages. I see now. Coeval with the development of this mega volcanic structure is the emplacement of dikes. They inflated the edifice at least 15%. So, seeing if there's anything more interesting than dikes around it. Although maybe that's interesting, but I don't know why. So, second stage features the underlying magma chamber, developing coeval with growth of the volcanic edifice, an associated dike swarm. The first caldera collapse event, represented by the Mesema caldera, was characterized by the formation of outer and inner ring faults, and the emplacement. <clears throat> major subaqueous pyroclastic and autoclastic debris. Okay, guys, <clears throat> I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna link. I'm gonna link this. I can't. <clears throat> it's too late for me to read it. I'm just a little out of it. I'll just link this unless I can find. This one without the, I guess that's fine, whatever. Okay. Welp, that was that. Anything else? Not so exciting on either of these videos. Just kind of, what's the word? Moving in like a swampy setting, like grudging, something like that. Trotting, no. Walk through resistance term. Synonym. I found it. No, I didn't. No, whatever. Okay. See you guys soon. Peace out.